Welcome to another episode of the Show Me Hoops podcast presented by www.justwintoday.com. I'm Coach Toby Heave of the North Scott Mustangs. Thank you for joining us today and taking the time to listen to the premier basketball podcast in the state of Missouri. Now normally we have topics on here that deal with coaching strategies and philosophies or coaches building their programs. Today we're going to talk about something that isn't directly tied to a coaching strategy, but something I've always been interested in and thought it is a fun thing to talk about in high school basketball, and that is the shot clock. Now you may be in a state like mine, or in my state of Missouri, and be asking yourself, the shot clock, like in the NBA, and in college, in high school? Well, the answer is yes, to some degree. A little fun fact that everyone may not know. There are currently eight states that use a 35-second shot clock. So what are the pros and cons of using a shot clock, you may ask? Well, first, let's start with the cons. And the first one is one that normally stops things from ever happening, and that is money. It could cost as much as $5,000 to equip a school with the necessary shot clock equipment. Now in some schools, that may not be a problem at all, but in a small rural school district, much like mine, that is not a very cost-effective way of spending money. A lot of schools struggle to buy new books and other classroom equipment necessary for learning each year. So it would be hard to justify telling every school they had to buy all the shot clock equipment. So say you have all the equipment, now you have to have somebody operate it. Have you ever been to a ball game where the clock, clock keeper didn't change the score correctly? They didn't start or stop the clock on time? Yes, I have too. And they normally get to hear all about it from the fans that know how to do their job better than they do. Well, let's throw one more thing at them for them to have to do. Or have a separate person altogether operate the shot clock. Both of these would also cost a little more money each game. I did mention this could cost a little more money, right? So what about the negative effects the shot clock could have on the game itself? The big argument is a lot of times you have a team run up against a more talented and just flat out better team. So the lesser team believes their only way of winning is slowing the game down, which could lead to them holding the ball longer, and trying to limit the number of possessions each game. We've all been to a game like this, where one team is much more talented, they've got better players, uh, better athletes, they've been playing longer, they're more experienced. So um, to try to keep the score close, the lesser team will normally end up holding the ball or running and running through their offense, either for a layup or just a wide-open shot, and the end goal to this is to, to normally try to lower the number of possessions in the game, um, making it harder for the other team to score. So obviously the shot clock has a huge effect on coaching strategy for a coach who has a team that may struggle to score. Um, and this is something that happens a lot in uh, really small schools also where you just run into a, a group or a cycle of less talented and athletic kids and maybe kids that haven't played as much you don't have as, as big of a pool of kids to draw from as the bigger schools. So the odds of you getting kids that, that know how to play year in and year out are, are a little bit more slim. Um, so with a few of these negative aspects of the shot clock out of the way, you may or may not have already made up your mind and decided the shot clock's a bad idea. It costs a lot of money. Uh, you got to teach somebody else how to operate the shot clock. Um, it also takes out a part of, an, a, of the game for, for some coaches. So what about it is actually good? Here's what I believe to be good about the shot clock and why I am in favor of adding the shot clock to the high school game. I think once you get past all the costs and money issues and get down to basketball reasons for the shot clock, that we end up with some good points. Here's my biggest point. I just mentioned that it might take away 
an advantage of holding the ball for a not as good team versus a much better team. Many will say we need the shot clock so they can't hold the ball and make the game boring, leading to it being more fun to watch. Like I said earlier, we've all been to a game where one team tries to hold the ball um, to keep the ball away from the other team, or maybe just at the end of the game, they try to hold the ball to, to hang on to a lead. Um, a lot of times this, this is boring. Fans don't like to watch it. Um, trust me, the coaches don't like to necessarily play in that type of game. But they have to do this in, in order to do what they think is best for them to win. Um, my take on this to, to using the shot clock is not to necessarily make the game more aesthetically pleasing for fans um, in that aspect of not holding the ball, but to make it more aesthetically pleasing in another way. If we take that strategy from coaches of holding the ball and, and playing a stall, stall game, then all coaches will be forced to make their teams get into the offense quicker, um, to find a shot quicker, to go rebound, um, thus being more competitive. I think this will make coaches a lot better also. We'd have to think a little more and in, and in what could be a really fun way. One coach that I love listening to talk is Gino Oriema of uh, the UConn Huskies women basketball team. Anybody that knows anything about basketball knows who, knows who Gino Oriema is and knows that he's a really, really good coach. And one thing that he has said is he wishes he could take a year off of coaching just to watch NBA teams practice, um, to learn how they get into their offense quickly. I love that idea of getting into the offense quickly and think it's a really neat perspective. So I know that going to the shot clock and talking about getting into offense quickly and you know, kind of deleting the, the stall game and the holding the ball game isn't necessarily going to be an instant fix of whatever state inserts the shot clock is all of a sudden going to be running better offense. That's not necessarily going to be the case. We're not going to see these benefits of better offense um, in two or three years, more like four, five, six years, when the kids who are actually right now are in elementary school uh, start working at it and develop to better players once they reach high school. I believe it's going to take that long because using the shot clock in high school will force coaches to almost start teaching kids not in a different way, but in a more effective and efficient way. We're going to start teaching kids to be better offensively if we know that when they're in high school in five years, they're going to have to be able to play with or without the ball. Um, they're all five going to have to be able to make quick decisions, recognize they have a good shot, recognize when a teammate has a good shot. They'll have to move the ball quicker, move without the ball quicker, set better screens, set up screens and cuts better. And overall, we're going to teach kids to be more focused. I think we as coaches – we'll find a way to put much more of an emphasis on these aspects of the game to elementary age kids, which will lead to them being better when they're in high school and probably not even being affected by the shot clock because they're going to be able to get good shots off before the clock runs out. Um, I think we've all heard it before. It's more about the Jimmys and Joes, less about the X's and O's. So we're going to really, really develop the Jimmys and Joes at a young age and really focus on more of an offensive uh, detail at a young age to develop these kids to being better players and uh, thinking the game a whole lot better once they reach that age. Um, another thing that I think is neat about the shot clock is that it also changes late game situations for a team that's losing or winning. Um, we know that normally you get into – the, the end of the game, the last minute or two, you might be down two, three, four, five points, and you need the ball back. So this typically leads to fouling, putting the other team at the free throw line to where they could possibly extend their lead, um, all for you just to get the ball back. 
with the shot clock, you could possibly save fouling to get the ball back because the other team who has a lead is going to have to take a shot or they're going to face a shot clock violation. This, On the other hand, this is also going to make the offensive team with a lead think about what type of offense are we going to run right here? What kind of shot do we want when we're up three with a minute to go and the shot clock's on? Because we have to take a shot. So now we're going to take a good shot, and then we're going to have to go on the other end and get a stop. So I think overall it's going to make both teams, both coaches, a lot better. Um, So the strategy in a close game towards the end will require a great deal of thinking and coaching. Not only would the shot clock eventually be an indirect result of players getting better, but also us coaches too, uh, getting better, smarter, more intelligent, and uh, thinking different game situations that we normally don't have to think about to that great of a length. Um, so I'm asking you out there, every li- everyone listening, what are your thoughts on the shot clock in high school? Uh, thanks for listening. Feel free to send us some feedback and comment on our website or social media. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Just Win Today. Again, thanks for listening, and be sure to visit JustWinToday.com for more stories, basketball ideas, and all of our other podcasts.